Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game from round 9 of this year's Tata Steel Chess Masters. It is Pragnananda versus Ju Wenjun uh, and uh, both of them are having a very nice event, Prague uh, even more so. He started off by drawing 3 games, then he defeated world champion Ding Liren and then uh, again 4 draws. And now uh, he faces Ju Wenjun, a uh, women's world champion, who uh, also has an interesting event. Uh, she did lose 2 games but she did defeat... Uh, 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 Alireza Firuzja. So uh, let's check it out. It's quite an interesting game. Features uh, one of your favorite openings, the knight attack uh, to the to, to two knights defense. So uh, let's dive straight into it. And we are going to explore many, many lines as this is quite a complicated game. So Prague has the white pieces, opens with e4. As advertised, we have the two knights defense, knight to c6, bishop to c4, and now knight to f6. The two knights defense is on the board. And now not the main move d3, but rather knight to g4. Then I'd attack to the uh, to the two knights defense and now pawn to d5. This is the only move that works uh, and it's the only move that has been played since knight to g5 was first played. So pawn to d5, uh, otherwise how are you defending the f7 pawn? That's the only way to do it. We have e captures on d5 and now knight to a5 attacking the bishop. I don't know if you guys remember I did mention that story I played in a tournament some three or four years ago uh, here in my hometown and I played against, uh, I don't know, maybe the, the, the boy was eight years old or maybe nine, maybe ten, I don't really remember. Uh, but uh, here after this e captures on d5 move uh, he played pawn to b5 and I've never seen this move in my life I was so weirded out by this I was like okay he probably doesn't know how to play chess very well but then you know it's it's uh, I figured out it's uh, it's quite an interesting move and I'm going to show you what uh, happens here uh, in case you also run into such a such a little boy now I played bishop captures on b5 which is not the best move uh, in the end I was able to win the game but it um, uh, really took me uh, a lot of moves to get uh, into a better position uh, the way you play this is bishop to f1 and this is the only way to um, uh, sort of push for advantage with white and then after queen captures you develop knight c3 attack the queen and the b5 pawn and only after the queen moves you bring the bishop back bishop captures on b5 because you had to defend that g2 pawn and now after let's say bishop e7 you will play d3 uh, and after both players castle let's say castles castles you will play knight to d or rather black will play knight to d4 go after the bishop you will go bishop to c4 and now bishop to b7 grabs hold of this diagonal let's say rook to e1 and if checkmate is being threatened it's okay to play f3 uh, so this is uh you know in general just so you know how to handle this b5 uh, uh, idea but i played bishop captures on b5 and then soon after queen captures on d5 it's not uh, clear what to do with the bishop you no longer have time for bishop to f1 uh, as the uh, e4 is coming then the knight will be hanging and it's a pretty pretty tricky situation you you will have to capture on c6 and already it's not that impressive it's an open game your opponent will have the bishop pair so not the best uh, but in the game uh, they went for the classical approach knight to a5 we have bishop to b5 check c6 d captures b captures and now not bishop to e2 the move i enjoy playing and that i have played so many times in my rapid games online but bishop to d3 that's sort of a fancy way of playing this uh, opening and it's been used quite a lot in modern times uh, I think um, even Alexei Shirov uh, played it against Magnus Carlsen and potentially won uh, one of the or maybe even won two games against Magnus not sure we'll have to look that up uh, but it's a very playable move and knight to d5 this is the main reply against this bishop to d3 line uh, just uh, keeps everything solid also it makes sense uh, there's no way for white to advance the pawn to d4 or d3 the bishop is on d3 uh, and the knight is hanging so of course you have to figure out what to do about this and knight to f3 is the main move but Prague goes pawn to h4 and uh, he's sort of daring Jew engine to, to play pawn to h6 and it's um, the absolute best move recommended by the engine but it's not an easy one to play if you don't know your ins and outs uh, otherwise you're just gonna get um, you, you're gonna get Get, uh, the destroyed here to give you an example if h6 yeah of course Prague will play queen to h5 now threaten checkmate and also you cannot capture the knight because the rook would hang and then after queen to f6 you would have some options here uh you could all go for let's say knight to e4 and we could even see a repetition here with something like queen f6 knight to e4 but most likely as i don't think Prague would uh, settle for a draw so early with the white piece we would see something like knight to h7 uh knight captures on f7 doesn't work 
uh, because of course you will not take with the queen you will play knight to f4 and you will attack the white queen and the bishop here and then black is just better uh, so probably you know knight to h7 would be played here and then after rook captures on h7 and bishop captures you will trap the bishop with g6 but still you have to uh, win the bishop uh, in, in a proper manner uh, and it's very easy to make a mistake to give you an example if queen e2 already black makes uh, sort of an inaccuracy something like uh, knight to f4 let's say queen to f3 and queen to g7 going after the bishop already queen to c3 is winning for white there is not a good way to, um, uh, to, to win that bishop uh, h5 is coming and uh, you don't even have to capture the knight uh, right away you can uh, first capture the pawn with check if the queen captures bishop then capture the knight and white will just uh, always be better uh, capturing on g2 with check king f1 uh, doesn't really do any all that much for for black uh, but okay after h4 we have queen to c7 and now pawn to b3 uh, you could also go for bishop captures on h7 and this is still a known position bishop captures on h7 is one of the moves that has been played here also some other moves are castles and you could continue to maybe develop with knight to c3 i can even show you this uh, also a very interesting line uh, we're going to trap the bishop but now h5 and after queen to e7 going after the knight d3 uh, defending the knight now knight f4 blocking the bishop so bishop will capture captures with check and now just queen e2 offering a queen trade so king d7 uh, avoiding the queen trade now you are still hoping to capture the knight here now queen captures on e7 bishop captures knight captures attacking the rook rook captures on h7 and knight to e5 check king to c7 captures uh, on g6 and you will have this position where white is up four pawns but down a piece and this it's, it's a really open game still the bishop pair is on the board uh, black is probably still better but uh, uh, pro pro probably you know f uh, figures that uh, if uh, she doesn't uh, know everything by heart that is going to be very very hard to, to reach this uh, uh, and she will have to spend uh, an incredible amount of time going into this uh, but uh, he goes pawn to b3 instead and it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game so he, di he didn't want to risk it with something like uh, uh, bishop captures uh, he thought that she would calculate well and he just uh, tried something that has never been tried before and it looks like a very slow approach because now you definitely can go after the knight but still it's very very complicated h6 goes after the knight and now you don't have time for queen to h5 because the queen on c7 already guards checkmate uh, so it would just be um, a blunder like queen to h5 knight to f4 and you can already uh, resign this so the, the queen moves even just h captures and g5 wins the game so instead after this um, uh, h6 we have knight back to e4 by Prague and now pawn to f5 going after the knight again knight e to c3 and now she goes back knight to f6 uh, another way to, to make it interesting is knight to f4 and then let's say if bishop f1 guarding the pawn here you go bishop to b7 and now if g3 attacking the knight you can even play c5 and attack the rook on h1 and if rook h2 okay now you uh, either move the knight or you can even castle queenside here and you will really have an <laughs> interesting game here since absolutely everything uh, is hanging here if, for example you capture e captures on f4 also opens up the e file uh, doesn't look very good for white but she goes back knight to f6 and now bishop to b2 by Prague just continuing development uh, bishop to d6 we have knight to a3 now uh, trying to get that knight to some active squares like knight to c4 and now pawn to e4 grabbing more space here pushing the bishop back queen to e2 first preventing the capture of the bishop while developing a piece and now castles by uh, Jew engine and Prague goes bishop to a6 he wants to trade off the light square bishops and the idea is that um, well you should definitely capture bishop captures on a6 something like queen captures and knight g4 looks really nice for uh, Jew engine puts pressure on the king side it's very hard to castle queen side for Prague also f2 would hang and uh, it's possible you know to even see a repetition here like rook f1 knight to h2 rook, rook back somewhere knight back to g4 uh, and so on and even if you see something like knight to c4 let's say knight captures queen captures king to h7 uh, you still have to deal with this f2 pawn and probably probably Prague would not go for a repetition but um 
uh, well, it, it would be interesting to see what uh, what he would do here, uh, because objectively it is better to just go for the for the repetition. But okay, uh, in the game bishop to e6 was played and uh, the game continues. Knight to c4 for Prague, uh, bishop to b4, and now Prague does get the castle queen side as he doesn't have to worry about the king side pawns. Uh, knight to b7, uh, thinking about remaneuvering the knight to d6, but Prague now does something that you wouldn't expect in an open position. Uh, he gives up the bishop for knight bishop captures on b7 queen captures and just plays pawn to f3 uh hinting at uh well just uh, a strong positional play but also maybe you want to just bust open the king side here uh rook a to e8 uh going uh, after that queen on e2 and now just knight to e5 uh so what do you play here well, it's a really, really tricky position where it seems like you could maybe do something about this knight not being defended, like bishop captures on b3, uh, but it doesn't work because after a captures and rook captures on e5, now the rook uh, is the victim of a nasty discovery. Knight captures on e4 also attacks the rook, and once you move the rook, now knight captures on f7, uh, on f6 with check. If you don't want to give up a material for nothing, you will have to play g captures, and now look at this, queen to c4 with check. Uh, black's position is all ruined, and the White will of course win this. And another move after knight to e5 uh, is knight to h5. This is the absolute top move recommended by the engine going after knight to g3. Uh, but after queen to f2, you can just play bishop back to d6 and the black consolidates. For example, pawn to f4, you play queen to b6. You offer a queen trade. And if d4 stopping that, now you play e captures on d3 al passant. And after a queen trade happens, now rook captures on d3. White will be better, but still it's a playable position for black. However, in the game she played pawn to c5, and now Prague plays uh, rook h to e1. Nicely piling up on the e file, e captures on f3, and now g captures on f3, uh, even giving up Prague, uh, uh, giving up the semi-open g file to Prague. So here we have knight to h5, uh, but now rook to g1. And the big problem for uh, Ju engine is that uh, okay Prague didn't maybe play the absolute strongest move here with rook to g1 uh, a3 or queen to b5 are winning on the spot uh, but uh, even this is uh, pretty strong as it's only move 24 and she's only and she's already down to eight eight minutes on the clock so here pawn to c4 giving up a pawn for some uh, activity on the queen side uh, and now Prague goes back knight captures on c4 also this uh, makes the knight uh, 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 not so active as it is on e5 and it also opens up this uh, uh, e-file although there's not all that much that she can do whatever she does there's nothing to capture if she, if she captures uh, the knight Prague will just happily capture with the queen and deliver check so queen to e7 is played and now pawn to a3 chasing away that bishop and there's no good square here like you go to c5 d4 is coming now you go to d6 for example the knight will happily capture it and now even d5 and look at this it's uh just really really bad for example bishop to f7 a queen to f2 and uh, well, Prague would be up two pawns uh, also Prague would be the one who's attacking and usually you will have this uh, uh, the two knights attack uh, the two knights defense uh, featuring the knights attack you will have black being down a pawn but black will be the one who's attacking black will be the one who has active play and here Prague is just up material also with active play and you know stuff to do so instead after a3 she just captures on c3 we have bishop captures and now queen captures on h4 grabbing a pawn here but now queen e5 putting more pressure on that g7 pawn now the threat of course is the simple rook captures on g7 so queen back to e7 she has to defend against checkmate and now rook d to e1 just piling up on that bishop on e6 uh, we have queen to d7 unpinning and also uh, you know maybe looking for some counterplay on the queen side uh, but there's n nothing you can do knight to d6 goes after the rook we have rook to e7 and now queen to h2 putting pressure on the knight uh, only square for the knight is the f6 square and then of course queen captures on h6 is coming so knight to f6 was played queen captures on h6 and now queen captures on d6 Prague played bishop captures on f6 and he was in this position on move 33 that uh Jew engine resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here so uh, interestingly in one event one classical event Prague takes down both world champions uh, the world champion England and women's world champion Jew engine and I don't know if that was uh ever accomplished before maybe in uh uh, you know, it's hard to say, maybe in uh, other time formats, but in classical, I, I can't remember if, you know, uh, as, uh, you know, for a very long time that that has happened, like even in the, even in the olden days, but uh, yeah.
Uh, I mean, well, you know, uh, since uh, I don't remember a tournament where someone defeated uh, Yurid Polgar and Kasparov in the same event. Uh, and also, I don't remember if anyone defeated, you know, Magnus and the, and the women's world champion in the past 11 years. So, yeah, uh, this could be this could very well be the first time someone defeated uh, both uh, women's world champion and world champion in a classical event uh, yeah, in, in, in one tournament. So, you know, big, big props to Prague for that. And uh, yeah, he did uh, drew a lot of games, but uh, victories against the two world champions bring him on top of the uh, top of the standings. Uh, I'm just gonna check the standings real quickly as some of the games are still being played. And this is one of the the crazier rounds. Uh, almost all of the games have been decisive. Uh, very few games ending in a draw. Uh, but yeah, as I'm seeing, yeah, well, already on five and a half we have Abdusatarov, Giri, Pragnananda, and Gukesh. So pretty pretty crazy stuff. Uh, you know, no one, no one really in the lead. Everyone trying to be first, and I mean, we're already in round nine. It's still possible for for pretty much anyone to uh, to, to win the tournament. Uh, but yeah, sorry uh, for for not mentioning why she resigns. Uh, what do you play here? I mean, the uh, the this pawn is just attacked three times. Of course, uh, rook captures on g7 is coming next. If you capture on f6, then it's not a problem. Just queen captures on f6, and there's really, I mean, you have nothing here. Even even if you get this one check in, uh, just king d1, and now you have to go back. You have to defend the bishop, but it doesn't work. Just rook captures, and after queen captures, you will play a rook captures on g7 with check, where she would have to choose between giving up the queen or moving the king, and then it's just just a nice checkmate this way. And if you don't do that, if after this um, uh, bishop captures an f6 move, you somehow try to defend, let's say you play rook f to f7, then you give up, um, you, you, you have to start giving up material bishop captures, you're gonna play uh, rook captures, and now again, queen to f6, uh, you, you, you should have access to the a1 square, because if queen captures some queen a1 action might be possible, but still, you're, you're just uh, down material, you're down two pawns here, you're down an exchange here, uh, black is the one under attack, there's there, there is absolutely nothing you can do here. So of course, after Bishop captures an f6, then she was already down to 30 seconds on the clock, and you'd have to make seven more moves to reach time control. Uh, she's had enough. Uh, this game will try again uh, tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. The brilliant stuff by Prague here. He is uh, for the moment untouchable. Uh, he he did have some issues in the previous round, but uh, you know he. Uh, it was very solid and was able to just draw the, uh, draw the, uh, draw the game. Uh, but yeah, all in all, uh, Prague is Prague is just a, a monster, a, a true beast. And uh, he's uh, well on his way to maybe winning this tournament. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so I yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Len Herbert, Yun Young, an anonymous person, Ulem Se, uh, and uh, Christopher and Ruth Burkett for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.